All right, so welcome to a um, short video on how to use Git and GitLab in particular to make uh, backups of your code, to do uh, source code control, and to be able to store your stuff um, outside of your own equipment or the Linux server. So push stuff off into the cloud in case something happens, you can get your code back. So first thing you want to do if you haven't already is register for a GitLab account, so gitlab.com. The usual uh, registration experience, pick a username, email twice, password, don't need to receive updates, make sure you're not a robot. Register, this will send you an email, uh, click on the email to verify that it's you, and that will get you an account. So I've done that for a new GitLab account for myself. I'm going to go ahead and log in, and when you first log into GitLab, you have basically an empty page. You have no projects. Okay, I can go to my projects and there's nothing there because this is a new account. Um, so there's a few things we're going to have to do to, um, to sort of set things up once. Okay, there's four steps we have to do um, that we only have to do one time. So I'm setting up um, communication between my test account on the Linux server and, and uh, GitLab. So I've got nothing going on in here, right? It's a totally empty directory, but presumably I want to create files on this server and then put them under Git's um, repository system and then push them out to GitLab. So I've got to do four things before this can happen. The first is I have to set up a way for GitLab to authenticate that I am who I am so that I have access to my, uh, my repositories. So come over here on the right. This is where your, your icon would be if you set up a picture for yourself. Go to settings, come over here on the left, find SSH keys and click on that. And you're going to want to type in an SSH key over here. If you've never done this, you can click on where it says generate one and it'll give you instructions. And I'm just going to use these instructions basically to set up um, this secure pair. So, um, but rather than follow the instructions through, I'll just do it here from, um, so you can see it. So I'm on the Linux server, okay, or this could be your home Linux system or um, SigWin or whatever it is that you're using. To, um, to run Linux on your own. So you use the following command, ssh-keygen-o-trsa-bigc. Your email address that you used when setting up your GitLab account, dash block size 4096. Um, that's a dash, not an equal sign. And it will generate a pair of files, a public-private key. Um, it'll ask where you want to save it. Take the default. Don't mess around with things unless you have to. Take the default. I'm not going to use an additional passphrase, so I'm just going to hit enter twice. I get this cool little ASCII art. I can put that on a t-shirt or whatever. Um, and so this creates a directory called .ssh if you didn't already have one. And inside there, there's a pair of files. IDRSA is my private key. Do not show that to anybody. IDRSA pub is the public key. That's the one that you give to other people or entities like GitLab. So I'm going to cat that out, and it's this big long file. I'm going to copy that with my mouse, and then I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to paste that in, and I'm going to add a title. Um, so this is test account at the Linux server, and I'm going to say add key. Okay, that's all I need for GitLab to be able to authenticate me, so I'm not going to have to put in a username, password, all that kind of stuff every time that I do something. All right. I've got to do three commands also just as a one-time thing. First is git config dash dash global uh, user dot name and I'm just going to put in my GitLab name. The next is user dot email and I'll put in my email that I used with GitLab. And the next is to tell it what editor I want to use because by default the editor is um, something other than uh, VI. If you like VI, go ahead and say uh, config global core dot editor VI, and we'll see where that comes in momentarily. Okay, so those four things: SSH pair and three uh, git config commands. You only have to do once. Okay. If I start trying to use git on a different server, I'm going to have to do these again. If I start trying to use it on a different laptop with a different version of Linux, a different uh, instance of Linux, I have to do these again. But as long as I'm developing code on the server and pushing it from there out to GitLab, I'm set with these four steps. Okay, so everything else that happens is either once per project or once per um, change in files. So here's the basic setup. Let's, um, let's make a project area. So I'll just make a my project. 
and I'll go into that directory and there's nothing in here. So I'll make some files. Um, so this is the main program. Here's a subroutine. And there's some more code. And so I got three files sitting here. Okay. I want to put these under git control. First thing you have to do, and this is once per project, git init. Okay. So now I've initialized um, my repository. The other thing you have to do once per project is the following. Git remote add origin git at gitlab.com colon your username at gitlab.com slash and the name of your repository that you want on GitLab. And I'm just going to do the, the simplest thing. I'm just going to put it the same as the name of my top level directory, but always end it with dot git. Okay, so once per project, had to do this git init, and then had to do this git remote add. Okay, so now every time that I have files and I've made changes, now I put them under git control, I do the following. So this is per change, git add, and whatever the files are that you want to add to your repository. I've got three files, all .c, so I just said git add star .c, and you can always say git status and kind of see where you are, and it's telling me I've got three new files. Okay, so adding puts our files onto what's called the stage, moves them into a staging area. They're not committed yet. We basically put everything on the stage, we can take things off the stage and so on. And then when we're ready to go ahead and push those into the repository, we say git commit. And git commit brings up an editor window where you have to type a message saying why you're committing these files. So um, this is the initial check-in of my code. All right, so we did our, our uh, git add, we did a git commit, and if we say git status, it'll tell us that our working directory is clean, um, everything is committed. So everything is in our local repository, but it's not in the cloud yet, okay? To put it in the cloud, you say git push origin master. And first time you do this, it'll say, I have no way to know it's actually you because we've never shook hands before. So run somewhere, do this somewhere where you trust your infrastructure, say yes and then it'll authenticate after that. So it types some stuff and we're good to go. Um, our project is in the cloud now and if we come over to uh, GitLab and we look at your projects, we'll see a project there called My Project. And if I click on it, we'll see there's the files, main, sub, and sub2. And I can click on main and there's what the file looks like and I can download it and so on and so forth. All right. So, well, I made a typo in my main program, so I've got to correct that because it's not going to compile if I spelled main wrong, right? Not really. Um, but let's go ahead and um, let's change this. So, all right. So now we've got we've got a working main program. Um, and if I say git status, it will tell me, hey, I've modified main.c that's not in my repository. Okay, so how do we put our code in the repository? git add main.c, um, git spelled correctly, and then git commit, and we can say um, final version of main program. All right, in here I still just see three files, right? And if I go over to um, to GitLab and I look at my project, the version of main.c is still my initial check-in from two minutes ago. Okay, to push my changes over, git push origin master. Wait for it to do its thing, it's pretty fast. Now if I come over here and I click on my project, main.c is the final version of the main program, I can click on that and there is my current version. And I can click on history, and that's the final version of main, but here's the initial check-in, and I can click on that and see the old version of main, which was uh, main.c, just this one line of comment with the misspelling. All right, so, so my project is preserved, right? I have access to the current version of my files, but I can also get to previous versions. And this is a really fast development stream, so let's let's edit sub.c. Um, 
so let's write that program here. So now sub.c is doing my doubling function. Git add sub.c, git commit. Um, meaningless comment which said fix this code, but that's okay. Git push origin master. And now if I come over here and I look at my project, and I look at sub.c, it's got my current version of the code. So I can come over here and I can clobber all my files on the Linux server and they're still saved in this repository. And unless I delete this repository, all the versions of all my files that I've pushed over will, will still be intact, right? And so you can recover those and we can talk another time about how to do that. But the important point is at this stage, you've got uh, backups of different versions of your code. And that's the real goal for getting on the air with Git right now. All right, hope that helps. Take care. Bye.